Remote work has been a big advantage for microconf type bootstrap startups for almost two decades. But all that stopped in 2020 with the global shutdown during the COVID-19 pandemic. Suddenly, one of the few advantages we had over big tech companies vanished overnight. It made hiring so much harder as employees of companies everywhere looked for the highest paying job that would allow them to work remotely and founders of bootstrap startups scrambled to figure out how to find talent and how to hire people in a global talent market that had suddenly seen a dramatic shift upward in wages for highly skilled tech workers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how remote work is dying and why that's good for founders. And if you stick around till the end, I'm gonna tell you the three job boards that I use when I'm looking for remote team members. I'm Rob Walling. I'm a serial entrepreneur with multiple exits. I've written four books on entrepreneurship and invested in more than 150 companies. Something that's been obvious for many years is that big companies, as well as well-funded smaller companies, have a lot of advantages when it comes to hiring. They can offer higher salaries, they can offer better benefits, and the promise of more stability. Now, whether that stability is real or not is perhaps less relevant. It's the perception of stability, because when someone goes to work for a thousand-person company versus a five-person and company, some folks are more risk averse and they feel like they might be safer at that larger company. So there are several advantages that bigger and well-funded competitors have over smaller bootstrapped counterparts. But us small, scrappy, nimble startups also have a few advantages over these bigger incumbents. One advantage is that it's so much more fun to work at a small company. It's more fun to have a small team, to have a huge impact on what you're building, and to not have to deal with the politics or all the BS of a 500 or 10,000 person company. For most people, all things being equal, it's a much more enjoyable experience to work at a small startup. The second advantage we've had historically is remote work because we have never had big budgets. We're bootstrapped and mostly bootstrapped, and therefore we usually can't hire in major metro areas. So we would either hire in areas of our own country where it's cheaper to live, or we'd go to another country altogether. It's something that venture-backed companies never would have considered prior to the past few years. But then COVID happened. The world shut down, and it became much, much more difficult for bootstrapped and mostly bootstrapped companies to find good talent because big tech was paying huge dollar amounts for people to live anywhere. And so there was this big scramble as people looked to the highest bidder almost. If I can live in Minneapolis or in Alabama or in San Francisco, and I don't have to go into an office and I can make generally the same money, what am I going to do? I'm going to look for someone who's going to pay me the most to do a job that I kind of enjoy. But remote work at big companies is coming to a fast end. Big tech companies that have fully ended remote work, and this is a very abbreviated list. You can obviously go to Google and find a list of dozens, if not hundreds of companies that are ending remote work. But big tech companies that are ending fully remote work include Apple, Meta, Facebook, Amazon, Dell, Disney, Activision, Blizzard, and so on. And this means opportunity for our types of microconf tiny seed companies. Across the 150 or so companies that I advise or I'm invested in, I'm absolutely seeing an easier time hiring great talent for remote first companies than we've seen over the past couple years. Because I wanted to hear firsthand from a few founders on this topic of hiring, I asked in our Tiny Seeds Slack, and a few founders weighed in with comments like, we hired our head of engineering who was working at Google Switzerland because they didn't let him work remotely. I'd argue there were other things in the decision, but certainly this helped him a lot in joining us. And another comment, my most recent hire said she's been looking for a work from home position and told me it was harder than she expected to find one, although she's hybrid coming in once per week, but highly values being able to work from home. Now, not everyone values being able to work remotely, but enough people do that it's a really nice swing of this pendulum back towards favoring smaller startups. And while remote work is here to stay in one form or fashion, bigger companies do seem to have a lot more issues with it than smaller teams. And this will continue to be a good thing for our kinds of startups, these bootstrapped and mostly bootstrapped startups, as it is such a nice advantage to have over large incumbents. In a minute, I'm going to tell you the three job boards where I look for remote employees. But first, I've mentioned Tiny Seed a few times in this video. That's the fully remote startup accelerator that I run that's aimed at SaaS bootstrappers. 
$500. Applications for our next batch open in the next couple weeks. If you have at least $500 in monthly recurring revenue and you want the perfect amount of funding, world-class mentorship from yours truly, and our stable of more than 40 mentors like Heaton Shaw, Jason Freed, and Asia Arangio, and a year-long batch program inside an amazing community with 15 or 20 other like-minded founders, head to tinyseed.com slash apply to be notified when we open the doors for applications. So now, the three job boards that I've been hiring on for years are... Dynamite Jobs, We Work Remotely, and Authentic Jobs. And a couple of these are more smaller niche job boards where you won't get 50 resumes, but the people who do apply, even if there's only a handful, are usually highly qualified to work with our microconf type bootstrapped and mostly bootstrapped startups. If you think your job might be going away because of a return to office policy, or perhaps you're worried about layoffs, Check out this next video about how to make the most of this transition. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel to get videos like this every week. See you next time.